everybody, it's David from Red Wagon Dioramas. This is my top 10 Black Series figures of 2023. If you're new to the channel, I am a big Black Series collector. You can check this out behind me. Those are some of my dioramas, my display in my office. It's kind of where I started collecting again about, I don't know, 2017, 2018 or so. These are figures that I really enjoy. So they're gonna be my favorite characters that weren't in the line yet and figures that are just really fun to play with and pose and set up. There were a lot of other good figures that didn't make my list, frankly, because like, for example, I'm not into the, uh, you know, Knights of the Old Republic. So I don't know Darth Malgus or Malak or uh, Bastilla Shan or any of those characters. And I'm also not that much into the Clone Wars. So I kind of passed on a lot of the clone figures. Most of these figures in this list are gonna be original trilogy uh, and a few others that just seem like standouts to me. Black Series is one of my favorite lines to collect. I do collect vintage Star Wars as well. So you see some videos like that on my channel. And I also collect some Marvel Legends and some G.I. Joe, you know, the typical stuff. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe, hit the like button for me if you enjoy this video and check out the other videos of my channel if you wanna see some of these dioramas, for example. All right, so let's get into it. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I absolutely loved the carded 40th anniversary figures for Return of the Jedi. So they put out how many figures they got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I've got 19 of these figures laid out on a shelf on the top shelf of my office. I absolutely love the Jedi card backs because that goes back to when I was a kid. The only ones I didn't buy were the carbonized TIE Fighter Pilot and the Imperial Guard, just because it was a little too gimmicky for me. Those are my honorable mentions for the year. Two of those are on my list for my top 10 this year. And those are the two original figures that weren't you know, straight repaints or repacks. Number 10 on my list is this Darth Vader. Now this is really cool. New Vader, new sculpted, maskless. Uh, version, you know, with the removable mask, the helmet, the removable hand when he gets cut off. You know, the Black Series did have a Vader with a removable helmet, but the head sculpt was just kind of weird. And the head itself, the helmet itself just looked kind of dopey. So it's nice to get a new sculpt of that figure and, a, you know, with the new photo reel and everything on the head. So this is the one figure on my list that I haven't opened but I just think he's beautiful. It's just awesome with the card back. I'm sure I would really enjoy this figure if I did open it up, but I don't really need to. I have a good Vader on the shelf already. But as far as being part of the carded series, I love this figure. So it makes my top 10 of the year. All right, number nine is Black Chrysanthemum here from the Book of Boba Fett. This is of course the Wookiee bounty hunter slash gladiator. So this is number nine on my list because it's an awesome looking figure. The sculpt is phenomenal. He just looks like he stepped straight out of the show. So outstanding job to the sculptor team here. But it's also like towards the bottom of my list because the sculpt is not great for articulation and they didn't give it the accessories that it needed. Like I was trying to pose this guy and it was just so hard to get him in any interesting poses, any kind of dynamic poses. He can barely hold his rifle. He doesn't have fists for, you know, doing his brass knuckles. He could really use like another another head sculpt with like a, you know, kind of like a growling uh, expression. That would have been great. And honestly, just even if his shoulders had more like spread to them and just more I don't know his legs all his joints they're all they're all constricted by the Wookiee fur so I just feel like he was so hard to pose and I really wanted him to be higher on the list for me but I just couldn't put him up there given just the limited poses he has so basically he's just going to kind of stand on my shelf with my other uh, bounty hunter figures looking menacing which is just fine he, he looks great that way so that's number nine black chrysanthemum all right and number eight on my list is going to be Darth Maul from the Gaming Greats release this is, of course, uh, Darth Maul from the Battlefront video game, right? I don't play much Battlefront. I've played it a little bit, but not enough to actually, you know, know the different skins and stuff for the characters. This guy is just a fun figure to pose. He is so um, he's so acrobatic, I guess, in the poses you can get from the, the articulation is great. The uh, range of motion you get from the figure, yeah, the head sculpt is just really cool, real menacing, awesome look, expression on his face. Also goes great with Star Wars Rebels, which I'm a big fan of Rebels. So I did get the other mall that came out last year, but this one I think I enjoy even better. That was the shirtless one last year, right? Anyway, great figure. I know a lot of people have this in their top 10 list. Outstanding job on the sculpt and the engineering on this figure. All right, number seven is from New Media, New Entertainment. I am picking Sabine from the new Ahsoka show. Now, I'm a big fan of Sabine, the character from the Star Wars Rebels show. So that's kind of why I really love the character. And I thought the actress and the, you know, the, the team behind the Ahsoka show did a great job bringing her to life. Character wise, I think she's a great character. You know, green lightsaber, Mandalorian, blasters, all that stuff. But more so the figure itself, once I start playing with it, the articulation, the engineering, everything on the figure is great. There's so many cool poses you can get her into. 
uh, with her blasters or with a lightsaber. I loved it. I loved her in Ahsoka and uh, real fun figure to play with in Pose. Number six is going to be Damaged Darth Vader uh, from the Kenobi show. This is the battle damaged Darth, obviously with the sliced open helmet, the awesome Hayden Christensen helm, uh, head sculpt in there behind the behind the helmet with the eyes. And I was pleasantly surprised when I opened this that you do get the you know the upper torso from the Empire Strikes Back Vader, which has the butterfly joints. So um, just real poseable figure, really awesome scene. Probably the best scene from the Kenobi show is you know that fight scene, the duel at the end. So seeing him get sliced open and having a figure of this that looks really good, like they they executed really well on this as far as you know making the uh, the helmet damage and the face sculpt and everything look really good. So you know, and it's got some battle damage on the on the on the cape and the chest plate and stuff like that too. But what a fun figure to pose with the Kenobi figures, which I actually really like the Kenobi figures that came out of the show too. So I think I like the figures better than the show. But this is definitely a standout for me, and this was really fun to get this one this year. I think this was a Target exclusive, so it was hard to get, but uh, definitely worth the effort. Great figure. Number five is a figure that I've been wanting in the line for a long time. It's Wicket the Ewok. What a great little guy. Classic character from Return of the Jedi. Absolutely love this figure. I couldn't wait to get him once they announced him. Such a small little figure, but well done, well executed. Looks really good. Goes great in my Endor diorama down there. Just a classic character that I, I really want in the line. So I'm very excited to get him. Yeah, so top five, Wicked. All right, number four on my list, great figure. Honestly, my favorite character in all of Star Wars and my favorite outfit. And that is Jedi Luke from the final duel with Vader and the Emperor. Of course, this is the re-released, you know, new sculpt, updated sculpt of Luke. This could have been my top figure of the year if it weren't for some of the other figures that, are, that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. But great figure. Well done as far as the sculpt. You got the butterfly joints, so you got great articulation. His head sculpt is passable. It's better than most. Still not perfect, but uh, st very good. You know, of course, he's got the removable chest plate with a lot of people wanted that. You know, I had the original Black Series Luke for the longest time set up on my shelf, and then I got the SH Figure Arts. He's up there on the, on the skiff behind me. But those guys were doing fine, but really wanted the updated one and very happy that they put this guy out. They put him out, what, three times this year with the Book of Boba Fett too, but this obviously is the uh, the one that I wanted the most. And the carded version, I love, I love the carded version and this is just so nice. So I've got one open, one carded, great figure. Number three on the list, another classic original trilogy character, sort of, is Doc Ondar from the Disney's Galaxy's Edge, of course, Hammerhead. Um, I ordered this guy right away. I couldn't order him fast enough. Very excited for more Cantina alien creatures. Hasbro team, please make more of the aliens from the Cantina and from Jabba's Palace. Even if you have to do it through a Disney show or whatever you gotta do to get it made. You know, obviously this is totally new tooling and I, you know, I fully expect they're gonna reuse this as many times as they can. And they should because we need more Ethorian aliens in the in the line. Yeah, I know price point was a hard thing for people to swallow on this guy. I think it was $45, which is super expensive. And honestly, it's not justified that kind of price. He does come with some cool accessories, the holocron and the sword and the helmet and stuff. But um, really it's just because he was the first, you know, Ethorian in the line. And they did a good job with them, you know, as far as the soft goods, the mixture of soft goods and the hard, you know, sculpted robes and necklaces and stuff. So great figure, really love them. I want more figures that are, you know, from the original trilogy that are well done and have a lot of accessories. I'm willing to pay a little more for that. So bring them on, guys. Bring on some more of those deluxe figures. Give us extra hands and heads. That's what I really want. So Doc Ondar, great figure. My top three this year. Okay, we're getting to the end of the list. Number two, this is a, boy, this was a great figure. Again, another deluxe figure. It's the Endor Trooper. This guy also came on a 40th anniversary card back. Only way they've released him so far. I'm sure he'll come out again later uh, in the regular line. Again, at a premium price point, $35, I think, for this guy, which again is just too much. Doing the Endor diorama was something I did this summer, so I wanted these figures for that, and they came out just in time for that. Great figure, you know, swappable face. We all know that. You know, you get both the old man look and the younger soldier look. Two weapons, removable backpack, removable satchel, nice paint apps on the legs. Only problem with this guy, obviously, is the knee joint. You know, it would have been nice if they'd used a, you know, greener plastic or something, because that 
kind of shows up whenever you bend the knee. Yeah, so Chrysanthemum, uh, the Hammerhead figure, and then Indoor Trooper, all three of these guys, deluxe figures. So Hasbro, I guess if you have to make more deluxe figures, I just would like the line to be good. I'd like the quality to be good. Like the, the paint apps, I like more paint apps, more accessories. Again, would really like some other head sculpts for some of these figures and some other hands. So Endor Trooper is my number two figure of the year. All right, guys, number one figure. If you watch my channel, you know I did a big review and comparison of this figure. Definitely my top figure of the year, and that is the newly tooled R2-D2 that Hasbro put out. Here he is loose. Great figure. The line needed it so badly. The old one was just so undersized and just, uh, I don't know, it was passable, but man, this new figure is great. You know, obviously with the removable storage feature here for all the accessories, all the different parts and compartments that open up, you know, they really took some of the best things from like the model kit and SH figure arts and kind of stole them and put them into here at the price point, 25 bucks. Can't go wrong with this. Definitely the best R2 out there for the value for the six inch scale. So I highly recommend if you don't have this figure yet, go out at least pick one of them up you won't be disappointed. Can't wait for R5-D4 and the other, what other other droid they announced? I think Grief Karga's droid, whatever. Bring them on, bring on more astromechs, more droids. Next, work on a C-3PO that actually looks shiny. That'd be great. All right, guys, that's it. So that's my top 10 Black Series figures for 2023. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button for me. Leave me a comment below. Check out the other videos on my channel about diorama making, collecting Star Wars, We've got a lot of vintage Kenner videos on there. We've got some diorama tutorials, all that kind of stuff. And I will do some collection videos here soon showing, you know, kind of the update to my Black Series collection and my vintage Kenner collection. As always, guys, really enjoy connecting with you guys here on YouTube. Thanks for all the chat comments and the live stream engagement and all that. It's been uh, one of the best things about doing YouTube has just been some of the friendships I've made in the hobby. So I'll leave you with that for 2023. Signing off. Happy New Year. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.